In today's video, I'll be talking about osteogenesis imperfecta. Also known as lopsign disorder and brittle bone disease, it affects an estimated 20,000 people in the United States. It has also been used as a pop cultural reference, such as Mr. Glass here from Unbreakable. It's a pretty good movie. You should check it out sometime. Osteogenesis imperfecta, I'm going to refer, refer to it as OI for the rest of the video, is a congenital disease, meaning it's present at birth and it is frequently caused by a gene defect on the 17th chromosome and this defect causes an alteration in the production of type 1 collagen which is the organic part of the bones. There are slightly different defects for this one gene so a person with type 1 OI has a different alteration than one with type 4 OI and for most in most cases it is autosomal dominant uh, you should know our dominant recessive genes by now after studying heredity and there have been recessive cases, and in some very rare cases, a first-generation form of this disease in which a mutation has occurred. Uh, here are some mutation locations. I'm not going to go into detail on them. This is very uh, detailed. And some more with their inheritance type and phenotype. As you can see, there are quite a few recessive listed, but it, they're rare. Uh, they don't follow. They don't fall under a classical type, which is one through four. Now, the effects of this disease on type one collagen, it um, basically takes glycine, which is used as an amino acid in the protein and it substitutes a very bulky amino acid for glycine and the collagen is formed in a triple helix due to the protein structure so with the substitution of a bulkier amino acid in for glycine it loses that triple helix structure which in turn chain changes everything from the interaction to uh, from nano micro and macromolecules uh, all the way up and then you have brittle bones and uh, the effects of this disease. Now, the top picture is a normal, quote unquote, uh, protein sequence, amino acid sequence. And the bottom picture shows the loss of the triple helix from the normal. Now, the type 1 collagen, if it's improperly made, the body destroys it in a person without this disorder but because this disorder occurred the improper collagen is used because the, the, the normal one can't be formed by the body so basically the collagen fibrils and hydroxyapatite crystals are altered and this causes the bone to be very brittle now everyone that is affected with this disease have weakened bones so there will be fractures in their lifetime um, now the severity of the weakness depends on the type of OI that they have so here are some general symptoms I'll go into the more detailed ones per type uh, in a few minutes so you have shortened height uh, blue sclera for some of them and early hearing loss and hypermobility from the loose joints and flat feet and poor teeth development now I'm, I'd like to go into detail on the hypermobility here um, this is actually caused by the lack of collagen type 1 collagen because that is often found it, it's basically a component of tendons and ligaments in our own body and without this uh, it causes the joints to be very loose and uh, they can't support the body as well and the blue sclera um, not everyone there are her her hereditary cases where b the blue sclera does not mean that the person has OI in fact um, I do believe it is out of England that people with blue sclera it's considered an inherited trait now that's a very severe a very intense blue sclera compared to what other people might have now that's caused again by the collagen deformation. Everything, all the symptoms and disorders from this, effects from this disorder goes back to the improper formation of collagen. 
Now, severe symptoms, you have kyphosis, scoliosis, and bowed arms and legs. Now, you've probably heard of kyphosis and scoliosis, in which people have the, uh, the bent back. Now, it's usually here, uh, again, due to the improper structure formation. Um, now, this is just a very good sign that somebody might have it, but other people uh, without OI might also have this. Uh, there are a few tests. Um, really, uh, they don't do the tests unless they're pretty sure that the child has OI, so if their bones break easily or they have that really intense blue sclera. Then they might consider a skin punch biopsy, in which case they take a sample of the skin and analyze it to see if the collagen is Im improperly formed. And a chorionic vata sample sampling might be done if there's a family history of OI and they want to find out if the um, child may or may not have it before birth. Now, there's therapies, there's no known cure, but there are therapies for people with this disorder. Uh, bisphosphonates, a very good uh, way for people with this disorder to get on with uh, their life about, about much more normally, because bisphosphonates increase the density and strength of bones and they've been shown to greatly reduce bone pain and fracture rate so bisphosphonates are a very good choice for people with this disorder now low impact exercises such as swimming uh, help keep the muscles strong and maintain strong bones and it's very very beneficial due to the fact that uh, there's not much of an impact on their skeletal structure but muscle building and exercise can take place and very severe cases and bracing is also uh, well not severe cases for bracing but it's also using uh, to assist in walking uh, but in extreme cases surgery is used to insert metal rods into the long bones of the legs so that the patient may be able to walk or stand due to the fragile nature of their bones um, Fractures will always occur. There's no question about it. As much prevention as can be taken, it it will occur most, but thankfully most of them heal quickly. And doctors do not like to use cast because it weakens the muscles of that area for what when cast use occurs. Now uh, I'm gonna go into the for major types here, there are eight identified types of this condition. Uh, type 1 is the most mild and common form of OI. Type 2 is the very severe form, uh, leading to death in the first year. Type 3 is also a severe form, not as fatal as type 2, but a shortened lifespan is, is expected and shortened stature and height. Type 4 is also a very mild form, similar to type 1 but it has a different genetic defect. And the other four types are basically subtypes of type four. So I'm gonna go into those right now. Uh, type five, it's uh, a dense band seen on x-rays adjacent to the growth plates of the long bone. So basically, you'll see in the x-rays uh, where these mutations occur and how they occur. Now, um, these are, type 5 is the dominant form, type 6, which I'll be coming to right here, is a recessive form, very recessive, only 8 people have been identified with it, so, uh, scientists have taken that as recessive, because they have, it's a very mild form, people live with it, and I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna read off all of the, uh, symptoms and, and distinctions of each type, they're all here, uh, you Feel, uh, let me know, pause the video, take notes. Uh, again, recessive forms, type 7 and 8. Uh, they're very similar to each other and just have the uh, genetic alterations. So, now the complications of having OI in general are multiple fractures and a hearing loss due to the improper formation of the bones in the ears. Heart failure in type 2, which is why most do not live past the first year. And respiratory problems and pneumonia 
the chest wall does actually does not form correctly, in which case infections can occur. Uh, spinal cord and brain brainstem problems due to the uh, vertebrae not forming right and a permanent deformity. Uh, there really is no the best way for prevention is genetic counseling to see the likelihood of the child being affected with OI. Um, there is no cure, but uh, scientists are currently looking into gene therapy as a way to uh, cure this disease. Uh, here are my sources, and feel free to look look them up if you wish to go into a little bit more detail. Uh, yes, thank you very much.